I'm Bill Lionheart from the University of Manchester. And I'm Shibia Gazzola from the University of Bath. Francis Watson from the University of Manchester. I'm Romina Gaburo from the University of Limerick in Ireland. I'm Sean Holman from the University of Manchester. Our programme's on rich and non-linear tomography. Usually when you think of tomography, uh, we measure an integral along a line. So one scalar per line in, in space. Um, and then we reconstruct a function that's a scalar image. So for rich tomography, we measure more than a scalar. We could measure a matrix, a whole function, a function of two variables like a diffraction pattern. And then we try and image something that also has a richer structure. So for example, a strain tensor or um, uh, a spectrum at each point or something like that. So rich, nonlinear, uh, is self-evident. Actually, most tomography problems are actually non-linear. And so, of course, that makes it much harder to solve both in theory and also numerically. Um, so, in, in this, we bring together the mathematicians working on uh, geometry and analysis, um, numerical analysts who, uh, who, who provide the essential knowledge to numerically solve the problem, but are also working in an interdisciplinary way with the people who own the problem. So the people who develop the instrumentation or who are interested in the solution. Um, so uh, perhaps slightly unusually for a Newton Institute pro program, we have quite a few people who are not mathematicians coming to explain their problem and to interact with us. So that we learn new problems and communicate the mathematical solutions that we have to them. So across a, a huge range of sensing areas, data is becoming not just much bigger, but sensors are increasingly capturing in multiple dimensions. And, and the rate of the increase of data being captured is much faster than computers are, are getting faster. So we need to not just um, wait for computers to catch up, but we need to be mathematically much smarter. But in terms of the multi-dimensional side of it, in many cases, this, this relies on new mathematics as well. Um, the, the sensing engineers don't necessarily have the mathematics to uh, capturing this rich multi-dimensional data. The mathematics isn't actually available to uh, understand what information is contained in this data, how do we solve the inverse problem which extracts it. So, for example, in radar, um, the next generation of radars are going to capture as much data as the internet bandwidth of a city like Edinburgh. That, that's vast. But not only are they increasing this amount of data, but they want these radars to inter interoperate together in a distributed way. What that adds is um, this, da this data no longer fits a, a simple forward model that the world is made up of single point scatterers. So the information they get out of this data collected doesn't fit their assumptions, and we need to interact with radar um, specialists to understand what we can do for them mathematically. Sure, the challenges in this program of rich and nonlinear tomography are several there. Um, we talk about mathematical and statistical challenges. After all, uh, the underlying problems here, the mathematical problems that we are trying to solve are extremely nonlinear and uh, in pose, that means that the relationship between the data and uh, the actual image is extremely challenging and therefore um, the need of, uh, of, of a richer, of a wealth uh, of, of data at hand there. But the challenges are also um, in terms of having uh, different communities looking at this, at, at an inverse problems, which is at the basis of rich and linear tomography from different point of view and getting in getting them to communicate together. Uh, perhaps finding a, a common language between medical doctors and uh, geophysicists and us, the mathematicians, uh, to try to solve these problems that are extremely, extremely challenging but also extremely useful nowadays. 
yeah, on the top of some, say, uh, purely theoretical mathematical challenges, there are also a number of computational challenges. So um, um, numerical, there is room for numerical analysis for developing uh, uh, new efficient uh, algorithms that uh, can deal with this rich and nonlinear problem, as uh, uh, both Bill and uh, Francis mentioned before, uh, um, uh, these uh, rich and nonlinear uh, uh, applications uh, uh, call for a huge uh, uh, amount of data and just uh, uh, simply uh, using some uh, uh, off-the-shelf um, um, standard algorithm uh, can, can just get you, say, in, uh, in, in trouble when you're trying really to solve uh, uh, problems with uh, um, good accuracy and uh, uh, it maybe in a, in a quicker way because uh, the application maybe demands uh, some uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, quick uh, answers or intermediate uh, uh, solutions, and so uh, for uh, uh, all that in, in all this setting, right? There is uh, uh, pretty much the need of uh, um, uh, like uh, enhanced uh, uh, algorithm that uh, can then uh, uh, in practice, right? Uh, take the mathematical theory, take the data, and uh, give us uh, reliable answers. Thank you very much. Yes, uh, I think one of the great things about this program is the possibility for interdisciplinary collaboration. We have uh, experts from a number of different fields, including within mathematics and also outside of mathematics. And many of the problems we consider require mathematical expertise from many different fields, including analysis, numerical analysis in particular, uh, probability and Bayesian inference, <coughs> and also it goes so far as uh, geometry. In fact, one of the problems I'm particularly interested in uh, has to do with uh, neutron transmission topography and uh, in studying the uh, geometry of uh, how neutrons are scattered, actually, the uh, Lie group SO3 comes up, and I find this very interesting. I think it's a great way that the mathematics incorporates into the uh, actual application. And so I think uh, the possibility for interdisciplinary collaboration is one of the great things about the program.